Look at this for a bad day. Hey, what can I get for you? Have a large cappuccino, please. Anything else? That's it, thank you. Sorry, I'll get that ready for you. Thank you. Ah, oh, that's the good stuff right there. Right then, we're off to do a maintenance today. So this is a site that um, I don't usually look after. It's just a one-off service. So I'm not too sure what we're going to find. I think all the kit's relatively new. I think we've got a Dake in VRV, I'm guessing a four, um, because it's going to be pretty new, and then there's a fair few Mitsubishi electric splits dotted around, I believe. Um, like I say, hopefully it's, uh, it's all in fairly good condition. Perhaps the filters might just be uh, clogged. But I'd like to think the kit will be working alright, we're going to test it all anyway, so um, you never know, you do find the odd installation error. So. Right then, so we've come across this Daikin wall mount. Obviously, this is going to have a pump. This one's got a little Aspen mini line. This is why it's important to check the drain. So I've just whipped that ceiling tile out there. And there's the end of our drain. It's not connected. So every time that pumps, that's going to pump water straight on that ceiling tile. And you can already see some water marks on there. So there's the other end. As you can see, it's come off. So I need to put that back on there and then give it a test. But yeah, that's why it's important to check your drains. So the majority of the kit that I'm looking at today are these, these Daikin cassettes. Some are worse than others. I haven't had a maintenance before. So you'll see some of these filters are pretty bad. I'll show you this one. There you go, look. Awesome furry. So that's well overdue a clean. This is how I clean an air filter. So I've also took down the grill. So the filter grill. You'll see that's pretty, pretty dirty as well. If we take off the filter, you'll see that is pretty bad. So, yeah, it's now unblocked. So, the first thing I would do is all that loose stuff there. You can either get a vacuum and vacuum that off or just knock it off somehow. So, I mean, you'll see how bad that is. Um, so, yeah, we're going to like knock all the loose stuff off and then um, I'll come back in a minute and I'll show you what I'll do next. Right, so that's most of the loose stuff knocked off. There's still quite a bit on there, but... Um, that's sort of as far as I'd take it. Then what I'm going to do in here, I've got a really mild disinfectant mixed up. So we're going to just spray, uh, spray the cover and the filter um, with a little bit of mild disinfectant. And we'll just let that soak for a few minutes. Once they've soaked for a few minutes, we're just going to get a hose of some sort and then we're going to blast from the back. So try and push any of that crap out the front. Same thing with the cover. 
you can just give that a swirl from both sides you can agitate it with a brush if you've got some stubborn stains but um, most of this is loose so it should just fly off So there's no right or wrong way of doing this. Some people like to use a vacuum, some people like to use a brush. This is just the way um, that I personally prefer. If you've got a water source, for me I just find it quicker um, and leaves a much better finish. There was absolutely no dirt left on, on this now. Um, like I say, I blasted it with some mild disinfectant. So, although these filters, they can't, you know, they're not HEPA filters, they can't catch viruses, they're still, they still harbour a lot of crap on them. So, um, yeah, nice to give them a wash wherever you can. And, and it gen genuinely doesn't take that long. Uh, if you try and clean one of these with a vacuum, um, you find yourself sitting there for ages trying to get all the crap off. So, that's just the way I like to do it. Like I say, it's no right or wrong way, but I just thought I'd show you guys how I do it. Right then, so I'm just going to give this a vacuum, get rid of all this crap around here. Other than that, it's not bad. Um, I do carry a little, one of these little spray bottles, so I'll probably give it a little spray and a wipe. Um, other than that, like I say, it's not too bad, relatively new, um, but there is the old watermark there, which is right below the drain. So this one sits in a pump that someone's put above the unit, but obviously the watermark is there, so it could possibly be coming from that connection that they've used, or perhaps one of the... One of the glue joints, what I'm going to do, I'll show you, I've got these little um, squirty sort of bottles, so I'm just going to fill it with water. We'll squirt some over into the, the drying pan, and then you can test the drying pumps by the remote control on these. So we'll um, put a bit of water in, we'll test the drying pump, and then we'll get up there, and we'll have a look, see if anything's leaking on that little bit of pipe work before it goes into the pump. Well, that's the little wash bottle with a little nozzle so I'm literally gonna squirt some water uh, down into that drying pan um, and then we're gonna flip test on the controller and we'll have a look see if we can see anything right then so this is the controller I'm gonna switch the controller on and then what we're gonna do we're gonna go into service Once we're in service, you're gonna hit test run, and then it's gonna say there, look, drain pump test run. So we're gonna scroll down, drain pump test run, hit that. So drain pump off, we're gonna hit that button there, drain pump start delay. And now it says drain pump on, we can go in there now and just check if there's any water leaking from that bit of pipe work. So it's quite hard for me to show you this, but um that there it's full of water i can see the water in there um the drying pumps are running and there's no signs of a leak yet so this could have been something that um that's already been repaired so i'm just gonna put a bit more water in we'll make sure none of that's leaking there like i say there is a pump there so obviously i'm gonna um test that pump as well See if we can see any signs of a leak. Right then, so the pump's running. There's nothing wrong with the pump. Can't see anything leaking from, from anywhere around here. Maybe you guys can see the water in there. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to put that down to the previous leak that's been repaired. Obviously goes without saying, if you've got access to the flare nuts, it's always worth checking them, make sure there's no signs of a leak, any signs of oil. Um, and also the pump up there, I've checked that, it's clean, but 
the bottom of them pumps there and tank pumps especially they get really really grimy so um, obviously they'll need removing and cleaning if required as well and then obviously you want to be checking all your temperatures and your, your operating data um, this one's all good so I'm gonna carry on with the rest oh man that sort of stuff does not impress me that don't impress me much nice right then so these are our outdoor units um one two three four five and we got the mitsubishi on there i think that's the comms room so what am i going to do i'm going to get the service checker set up um and yeah we'll start connecting the service checker up there's no centralized controller on this so we've got to go on off one of the outdoor units um well off all in all the individual outdoor units even but the beauty of having one of the service checkers is it um, saves you a lot of time sort of and you can, uh, testing units so i can put all the units in cooling heating via the laptop and we can have a look at all the operating data that you just wouldn't be able to see otherwise so I'm going to do that, make sure these are these are alright, but something I noticed straight away, which I don't like when people gland in the top of an isolator, so I don't know if you can see that, but they're all like that. Mm. I might take one of them off and just have a look, we'll see if we've got any water in there. Before we'll give you a quick look inside of ARV4. Uh, if you haven't seen one, obviously this is the master unit, it's only a small um, a small unit this one. With the smaller with the smaller units the boards run down the left hand side like that. With the bigger units the boards they run along the top there. Um, one of the things with these VRV4s is they pinch a little bit of cooling around this pipe here and beyond there is the inverter, so a bit of a heat sink there and the they basically try and uh, use some of the liquid to cool down the inverter. On the bigger systems, it runs across there. And if you've ever got to change the boards, the PCBs, you have to try and bend that pipe out. So um, obviously the system's full of refrigerant, so it can be a little bit hairy, but they can assure you that it can be done. I have done it. I've changed the boards on one of the bigger units before. So just something to bear in mind. Obviously the other noticeable difference is the way the coil sort of half wraps around the front. So again, on some of the bigger units, the compressor's sort of tucked down there. Now I haven't changed a compressor on a VRV4 yet, but um, I don't know what it'd be like to change a compressor sort of tucked behind there. If you've changed one, drop it in the comments. How was it? Um, was it a pain in the arse or did you, did you manage to do it okay? I'm going to connect my service checker on there. Um, we're gonna have a look, just get some running data and then um, drop it through a bit of a test. Now, just one more thing to note because I came over here and I said I didn't like glanding in the top of ice lighters like that. And then I've completely forgot to say there's something else I don't like and that is this. So not only is it this cable, so this SY, which personally I think should be banned um it's horrible stuff but look at that wow that's not great either all right there you go look we've got one two three four five six indoor units off this one so what i'll do i'll put these in cooling we'll give you a running cooling then we'll uh we'll have a scoot over some of the operating data so a little piece of advice uh, if you're checking, I don't know, perhaps all your thermistors and stuff on a system, on an outdoor unit, um, if you switch your system off, leave it for a bit, leave it for half an hour, an hour if you get a chance. Let it let it all settle down, let all the temperatures equalise, and then you can have a scoot through um, down the list, and all your temperatures should read approximately the same. Um, you know, if you've got any thermistors that... Um, that miles out they're going to stand out like a sore thumb you know everything around here look 2021 
24. Um, you know, if something was reading like 50, I'd be uh, questioning whether it's working correctly and you could have a little look further. But just something to note, yeah, if you switch it off, let it all settle down and um, it just a quick way of seeing if anything's untoward. I've got this one running now. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to have a flick down this operating data and just check everything's everything's good on there and then I'll move on to the other three. I'm not going to get too detailed on this because um, yeah, I'm just not going to. But yeah, I'm going to check everything. If I find anything a bit suspicious, then we'll cut back in and I'll show you guys. But. I imagine everything should be working fine. Like I say, this kit's not that old, so um, I'm gonna whip around it all and uh, I'll catch up with you guys in a minute. Just out of interest, I'm gonna take the cover off this isolator. It's been installed for, I think, two years nearly, so I wanna know if any water has made its way in there. I'll be honest. probably come out straight out the bottom of there if it has. Full of water, just as I thought it would be. Yeah, watch your thoughts on that. One more thing, I'm pretty sure if you're a Sparky or probably even an air conditioning engineer, you'll know these rotary isolators. There's the fixing point for the bottom, and then. There's one up there, look for the top. So you haven't got to drill through the back of this box. This is supposed to be a weatherproof box. So if you look over there, you see you've drilled a gaping hole in the back in each four corners, which again, that's another way that water could possibly get in there. So mm, it's not ideal really. I mean, it's not uncommon. You see this everywhere to be fair. Um, there's loads of isolators that are landed in on the top and there's loads of isolators that are pinned from inside or screwed from inside. Not uncommon, but that doesn't make it right, to be fair. Right then, so I went ahead and finished up on that one. Um, yeah, not getting into too much detail. It was just a little video to show you a few of the things you might find during a maintenance. Not a video to show you how to do a maintenance or what you gotta do. Uh, I just thought it'd be interesting just to show you some of the stuff you find. It was a it was a site that I'd never done a maintenance on before, so um, there was always gonna be something that popped up. Oh, fucking thing. Sorry, my seatbelt. My seatbelt thing's broke, so if it starts beeping throughout the video, I do apologise. But yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Um, as always, massive thank you for watching. If you could smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, and then please drop me a comment if you want to see anything or you got any thoughts.